Hey, it's Steve, welcome to my shop. Now, sometimes you build projects for customers because they're gonna pay you money. Sometimes you just do it for fun, but sometimes you build projects for yourself and you do it to make your shop a little more efficient in some way. And that's the subject of this video, so stick around. So recently I sold my Onefinity Woodworker CNC and I bought a new Onefinity Elite Journeyman. Now this machine is a bit bigger than my old one, which means I needed to build a bigger workbench for it. And when I built it, I put some drawers in it. Now these drawers are, you know, typical drawers that slide in and out, they're, but they're big empty vessels at this point. And one thing you'll appreciate about CNC's is there's a lot of bits and pieces that go together and I needed a place to put them. There's honing oils and three in one oil and blue tape and sharpeners and bits. So I just had to get rid of all of that stuff and get it organized. And in this video, I'll show you how I went through the process of creating inserts for these drawers. Now I wanted my inserts to fit pretty tightly in here. So first thing I needed to do, of course, is take a bunch of measurements, length, width, height. Now the height isn't nearly as important here because I'm not gonna go anywhere near the maximum height, but I measured it anyway, just so I had it. So being a pretty lazy guy, anytime I design anything that looks like a box of some sort, I go to boxes.py. It's an automated tool. You type in a bunch of parameters and it will generate a box. Now the interface here starts at this page, which I'm showing you. And there's two ways you can get into a box. The easy way is you can look at the gallery and say, I have a box design that needs to look like this and pick a design that, that it shows you in pictures. Or you can go to the menu and click the power user sort of functions and if you know the kind of box you want. I'm gonna start from the gallery here and show you the kinds of things you can do first of all, but I'm gonna scroll down to the kind of box I'm looking for which is just gonna be an insert that looks kind of like this, where I can have multiple compartments and uh, I can configure the size of those compartments. So I'm gonna pick that one and you'll see it, it starts with a, with a default worksheet here. And I won't walk you through all the specific details here. I'll just show you what I ultimately populated this with. And here's the form actually filled in or almost complete. The, the height of my tray is going to be 70 millimeters. Uh, there's going to be three compartments wide at 90 millimeters each. Now these are outside measurements, so keep that in mind. So the total width of my box outside to outside in this case will be 270 millimeters. And it will have two rows. The first row of, of compartments is going to be 90 millimeters deep. And the second set is going to be 320 millimeters deep. And again, you can add up the math there and find out that the depth is going to be 410 millimeters outside to outside. Now, this next thing is the layout. I don't want six compartments in my box. I want the one in the front, the, the one that's going to be 90 millimeters wide, to be just one box and I can just go in with my keyboard and edit these things and now you'll see I have one compartment that's 270 millimeters wide and 90 millimeters deep and three compartments that are 90 millimeters wide each and 320 millimeters deep. So that's what it's going to look like. Uh, next thing is the thickness of my material. I put 3.6 in here. I'm using hardware store eighth inch plywood, which is, I don't know, 3.3, 3.4 nominally, but it, it isn't actually all that accurate. And I've run into problems in the past, so it's better to have a little extra space. You can use it for glue if you want. And I set it to 3.6. We're gonna generate an SVG file. And the last thing here is the burn. Think of this as the kerf and what it does is adds that much amount to the ends to both sides of a cut. So in this case, if the number is bigger, the, the tab that you're inserting into a slot gets tighter. And I found it too tight at the default 0.1. So I lowered it and uh, set it to 0.05 and it seems to fit okay. I still need a mallet to tap it in there, but it's not hammering, it's just tapping. So that's it. And then I can just click the download here and it will go download it to my computer after it generates it. And I'll have an SVG file in my downloads folder. All right, so we got the design ready. Now we bring you the star of the show, which is the Algo Laser Delta. I'm going to use it for this video to do all of the cutting for this project. Now you might ask if I've got a 90 watt CO2 laser sitting over here that can cut plywood like butter, 
and I've got a bunch of 40 watt diode lasers. Why on earth would I use a 22 watt laser to do this job? Well, in part, I'm trying to show you some real world examples of what projects you can do with it with, with a 22 watt laser. It's not a it's not a compromise, believe me. This is a great laser. I'll show you when I'm done this job why I specifically chose this one. This laser cuts like no other laser I've seen, including my 90 watt CO2 laser. And I'll show you the output. For now, let's put pipe the design into Lightburn and get it set up to, to do the cut here. I've got Lightburn up and running here and it's configured for the Algo Laser Delta. So this workspace you see is the actual dimensions of the Delta. And I'm just gonna drag in the SVG file that got generated out of boxes.py. And you can see it's quite huge. There's a lot of bits and pieces here. Now I can get rid of this label because we're not gonna use that. But I've got, to, I've got to move things out of the way here. I've got to get things off the workspace. So I'm just going to drag some of these out of the way and position them over here for now. Once they're off the workspace, Lightburn essentially ignores them. And I'm going to start with the floor pan of my tray and I'll have to rotate it sideways here. And you can see the tray itself takes, the floor pan takes almost the entire workspace. So I'll do that one first and then I'll size all of the rest of these accordingly and cut them and make them fit on the material I have. So it's gonna be that simple. I'll start this job and we'll see what it looks like. So I won't show you the whole cut here, but speed is 400 millimeters a minute at 100% power. And it's cutting the outside perimeter first and then it's gonna go and cut all of the slots and there's a lot of them. This, this whole thing took about, I don't know, five minutes. And when it's all done, I cut all the pieces out. Now you wanna understand why I chose the Algo Laser Delta. Look at these cuts. These are perfect right off the laser. You won't find a smoke trail anywhere on these. And this is the only laser I've seen that can do this perfectly. It's just mind boggling how good this laser is. I won't put you through the misery of watching glue dry here, but I'll do the rapid fire assembly. So I did the inserts first on the inside then the outer perimeter, and uh, before long, you have a box. Now, I did glue the outside pieces, and uh, you saw I used a mallet there to tap. Again, it's tapping, not hammering, so I wanted the box to be tight. Now, you may or may not have to even use glue, depending on your application, but it's always good to have things stuck together. I only glued the outside perimeter, not the inside, so there's a bit of room for expansion there if it has to move. So that's the basis of making a drawer tray, and you can use this as the basis for your kitchen drawers, for vanities, for anything. And it works really well. Now I also, as part of this, made what Boxes PY calls a drill box. I won't go through the steps there because honestly I had to do a whole lot of math to make it fit into the remaining space in my drawer. But in the end, you'll get something that looks like this one I'm showing you on the screen. Now the beauty of, of Boxes PY generating SVG is once you bring it into Lightburn or any drawing program, you can make edits to it. So in the case of this one, I have a lot more quarter inch bits than, than half inch bits. So I made some modification. I removed some of the eight, the half inch bit space and I replaced it with a copy of some of the, the quarter inch bit space and came up with a, a box that is perfect for my needs. And that's it. And if I did my job correctly, everything is just gonna fit in here. The big tray drops in in the back, very little play side to side. Then I dropped the drill tray in. Now, if I put it in straight, it would go in easily. I did put some just wood on the inside uh, of the ends to act as handles so I can pull it straight out later, but it holds all my bits. And when I look at the populated drawer, everything I need for my CNC fits in this drawer, which is great. Uh, the beauty is I have two more drawers that I can do something similar in and uh, be much more efficient in my shop. So thanks to Algo Laser for creating this Delta. It's a real piece of technology. At 22 watts, it's the only laser I've seen that can consistently cut without leaving smoke on the material. That in itself is a reason to get one. If you already own one, just go cut things for fun and you'll see what I'm talking about. You won't find, find smoke on material if you've got your settings right. 
If you're looking for a 22 watt laser, consider this one. Uh, it's priced great and I will put an affiliate link in the description down below if you use that. I'm grateful because you're helping out the channel. Now, if you're a member, I'll put the designs for this video uh, up on the member site and you can download them from there. You might specifically be interested in the drill box for all of your CNC bits if you have a CNC. With that, I'll wind down. So get out there, make your world and I'll see you next time.